Can you see that? I'm going to tell you what it sounds. Richard, you helped me and my game in many ways. Your dedication to basketball and the community is greatly appreciated. Thanks for helping, making me the person I, I am today. With much love, Tamara James. You know, oftentimes society stereotypes athletes and they think that you are nothing more than a basketball player. They kind of limit you into what they feel like you are qualified for and limit you, you know, based on what they feel like you know or don't know. Not understanding that that ball has taken me all around the world and it has given me experiences and, and allowed me to sit in rooms that a degree could never put me in. I can sit in any type of atmosphere because basketball has taught me you have to adapt. You either adapt or you get left behind. And so for me, I, I, I know that life for me is more than just the basketball. I know how to study whatever I'm going on because I've studied the game. I, I've studied film. So when I go into my commission meetings, I'm studying the agenda like I'm studying my opponent. I'm making sure that I am as prepared as possible for whatever to be thrown at me. And I know that it's not the end of the world if I don't win. Your journey may not be my journey. It may be easier or it may be tougher. But one thing about it is that we all have love for the game and we all will thrive outside of that because we understand what it takes to have a heart of a champion. So my mom has this photo of me and um, I, I think I'm in diapers. I may be in a diaper or not. I, I can't really recall, but I'm shooting on a basketball goal. My sister's hiding behind the goal. Like I never want to play basketball in my life and she hasn't played basketball. And um, I'm just shooting and I have to be two years old, I can imagine. Um, but from what I can remember in playing, it's um, trailing my dad and, and shadowing him and watching him play and just kind of getting a love for the game. And basketball really became my outlet. I, I dealt with some challenging times um, within my childhood. Uh, and and about, uh, basketball was my go-to to really act as a stress reliever. Um, I can remember being in the sixth grade, maybe seventh. Um, I believe it was the sixth and I, and my dad's brother, he, I don't know if he started a basketball team, but he came pick me up and say, we're going to put you on this basketball team. And I, I didn't last long on that team because it was another team that was closer to me, coached by Richard Walker, that was right from the community. And he was, um, you know, putting together this travel team. And I don't know what he said to my mom and my dad, but they shipped me over there. And so that was the real first organized team that I played for. I think we were 12 and under. And um, I was 12 years old. I had never been on a plane. And we went to Oklahoma City. We went up there and we got blown out. Um, we were really good here, but had no understanding of what it meant to really compete at a national level. But it was a good humbling experience. My name is Richard Walker. I'm a retired employee for the Seattle Hollywood Parks and Recreation Department. I also presently coach the South Bar High School Lady Bulldogs. I reside in the Seattle Hollywood, Florida. I met Tamara James um, when she was about 11 years old. I had an opportunity to actually go to college with her father, Ellis James. Um, she was a very active young lady. Um, she was special uh, just due to the fact that she showed a lot of leadership ability at a very young age. Um, very nice, uh, was a sharing young lady and a pleasant person to be around. Growing up with Tamara, I would say was quite adventurous. Um, we had a lot of laughs, a lot of fun together. Um, the most memorable one for me would be is when we went to, I went to her middle school game and I was embarrassed with my friends like, oh my God, my sister doesn't know how to play basketball. Y'all don't be picking on her. I'm going to beat y'all up or something. And she came out scoring, and I didn't know where in the heck she learned how to play basketball. But her and my dad apparently had been practicing, going to the park, playing basketball, and she was phenomenal.
And I was totally blown away from what I saw, seeing as we grew up in the same household. It wasn't like me playing basketball. I don't even want to go there. But it was when I saw her, I was very impressed and I couldn't believe it. I knew right away that she was very athletic, just based on the fight. Uh, her father uh, being a great basketball player, and her mother being a great athlete as well. And um, she was just this girl. And I, I never really knew how great she was going to be, but greatness was written all over her. So when I first met Tamara, my expectation of her was very high. Um, Tamara uh, proved and exceeded all the expectations I had for her. And my number one expectation always was for them to take the basketball and use the other two to continue the education. And she was just as competitive in the classroom as she was on the basketball court. I first met Tamara James when she was a ninth grader in high school. I was an administrator at South Briar High School and had gotten word that she was quite a uh, talent on the basketball court. I was a basketball coach before I became an administrator and had some success as a coach. So uh, I had that going for me and got to meet her, saw her, saw her play uh, in the AAU. Uh, there, the girls would come in to the school and play their AAU ball and got to see her and just recognized immediately the talent she had. During AAU, she averaged about 30 points a game from 11 on through. She was probably the most dominant player on the circuit. Uh, no matter who we play, if it was a player that was that they rated higher than her, if they played against her, she outplayed them. And that just was uh, Tamara James, and she, you know she was undersized as a player, and that was a challenge too going into college. My name is Abby Ward, I'm head coach at MacArthur High School in Hollywood. Um, my first um, encounter with Tamara James is, or I was her high school basketball coach for four years. As a junior, as a junior in high school, um, coming into her junior year, Tamara isn't really uh, uh, for a Division I program. She, she didn't possess the height that I felt she would for a big time program. So I wanted to bring her out and have her doing a lot more guard responsibilities on the floor. We've always worked, you know, guard drills and things like that. I do it with everybody. But I wanted to bring her out on the floor because I didn't think when she got to college, she could play up underneath the basket where she played for me a lot. I mean, I, I had the offense where it bring her out and in. But for me, she was my best, one of my best rebounders. Um, and when she got to University of Miami, they had her down low. And I was thinking, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, this girl is gonna get killed. I mean, I know today she probably wish she wasn't down there because her body probably have taken a beating because she's so undersized, but she got the job done. And that's her will. That's her will and determination to succeed at whatever. I think whatever you put in front of Tamara, she's gonna do well. Well, I got a scholarship um, to go to the University of Miami. That's one of the best decisions I think I could have made. It put me in a situation to where I really had to develop my skill set of being double teamed, of, of boxing one, triangle and two, had all different types of defenses thrown against me. And I had to compete against the best of the best. And at that time, the University of Miami was not a basketball school, it was a football school. And so we weren't very good my first year. I think we lost more games than we won, but I had to go in it with a mindset of, you know, where, what is my goal? What is the ultimate goal? And my ultimate goal was getting to the WNBA. We, we had a little motto uh, when, she, when they were 11, that we would take the basketball and we would show them the basketball. And what we would do, we would say, this is your tool. This is what you're going to use to pay the way to continue your education. So don't allow the ball to use you. You use it. So that was our motto. When TJ graduated from the University of Miami, and when she was drafted uh, eighth in the first round overall, she met me at my job that next day. I looked at TV today, the next day I see on TV, the next day she's in my office. So Tamara's in my office, and uh, she's sitting in my office, and she's sitting there, and um, she's looking at the expression on my face. And she said, Coach, Coach, I did graduate. I do have my degree. Because she bought me this jersey in, in a frame, and I was like, uh, something missing. Because she was supposed to bring me 
a uh, bachelor's degree first. And she said, Coach, I know I did graduate. I just wanted you to know early. It's just that I got to go to the WNBA early before graduation. I said, okay, now we can talk. And she always teased me. I mean, she always see that expression on my face. And she looked at me and, you know, she just smiled. And it was great uh, to know that she remembered that motto. I wouldn't care. And I always told him, uh, I don't care if you make the WNBA and all of that. If you don't have a degree, then the ball you should. But if you have a degree, then you use the ball. My name is Annette Sanchez. I'm Tamara's grandmother. I mean, Tammy, Tamara was drafted to the WNBA. I was so excited to, I didn't know which way, <laughs> what to do. And when we were younger, she always had her friends saying, oh, you're going to become the first girl in the, in the NBA. At the time, the WNBA did not exist. Um, but once it did exist and to learn that she was going to be drafted number eight in the first round, we were ecstatic. I was very ecstatic for her and happy for her because that was her dream. That was her goal. My journey within the WNBA isn't like others' journeys. I didn't have a great journey there. Um, I didn't understand how to sit on the bench. And as a competitor, when you have never sat the bench, when you have never had to be in the position to have your talent just sit there and not understand it, and when, when you've been a starter your whole life, a leader your whole life, you know, everything of all the teams your whole life, and you get there and, and you don't play at all, um, to be a first round pick, it, it, it was, it crushed me. To see someone come from playing all these minutes, scoring all these points to the WNBA where she's not necessarily doing so once she's there. And I went to visit her and I'm yelling at the coach the whole game. Like, what are you doing? The best players on the bench, the best players on the bench. Cause big sister always got a loud mouth and I'm always protective of her. That really challenging for me. As well as it was challenging for Tamara, you know, uh, during the WNBA, you know, I would look out and, um, you know, they didn't uh, play as much as she liked to be played. And um, like I said, Tamara liked to ask questions. She got to ask questions. Uh, she's fearless. And, uh, you know, at that level, uh, sometimes they don't want to want you asking questions. I can remember going up to the coach and saying, what can I do? so that I am able to get on the court. What can I do extra to tr so you can trust me? And I can remember him saying, it doesn't matter what you do. I just, I can't play you this year. And then I understood how the politics of the WNBA or any business of that nature, how it works. However, I wasn't mentally mature enough to really be able to to really deal with that level of, of disappointment, of defeat, um, I had an attitude, um, I had a chip on my shoulder, and, and I created a negative name for myself that followed me. Um, and if it's something that I regret, I regret that. Needless to say, that along with um, injuries kind of plagued my basketball career um, in the WNBA, but I managed to play for nine seasons overseas. I, I played in, in Spain, I played in Turkey. I, I played everywhere, but I spent the, the majority of my career in Israel. Um, and I love Israel. I, I, I love the tradition. I love everything about being over there. I just can live there forever. Um, you know, I wasn't making Diana Taurasi type money. <laughs> and so, you know, you have to really think about your future. Like, what's the end goal here? You know, are you trying to just win another championship? And I, and I didn't want to go down at the bottom of my game to where people were like, she need to hang those shoes up. And so I, for the for the last two years, I, I tried to see if I could have an opportunity worthwhile in, in the States to be able to retire. And um, I did that. I, I got a good paying job um, at Port Everglades and I decided to retire. And so um, I'm very grateful for for the journey and what basketball taught me. And um, I, I owe it my all. When I heard she was coming home, I was real happy, like a little lamb. <laughs> yeah. Tamara is resilient. Um, she's like a basketball. She always bounces back. Uh, you can never count her out.
Um, I, I, can, I can remember um, planning for a Tamara James Day. And I can remember going down to the commission meetings because I was seeking funding uh, and support to, to have a Tamara James Day. It cost like $20,000. I was seeking like $1,000 for the city to partner with because we're serving, you know, all of their students that go to the area schools. And I can remember in part a commissioner being very negative. One of the commissioners was talking to the residents and she said, that's okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go take your seat. I, I had my citizens comments. I went on down to the podium and I said, you know, I don't like what I hear. I don't like how you treat people. And so I'm going to run for your seat and I'm going to show you how to treat people. And when she sat down, we were laughing like, girl, what did you just do? <laughs> and that's just a competitor in me. Um, that is just who I've always been. And so I went home and I, and my mom, and I'm asking my mom, like, what do I just do? She said, you just announced your campaign. Then the next thing I know, um, Chairman Jane running for a commission. I'm like, wow, she run for commission. She get the most votes. She blow everybody out the water. Uh, so she became the first and the first youngest black mayor in the city of Dania Beach. And I found out that she was going to be the mayor, I was there. We looked at it on the TV when the scores keep coming up higher and higher. And then it said, oh, she won. So she's the mayor. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was excited. I thought it was awesome. And, you know, she's going to do what's right for all people, not just for some people. And, you know, in politics, that's not always a... Uh, the the popular choice first year it was like drinking water from a fire hose it was so much coming at me and, and and i was just like oh my gosh oh my gosh i had to spend so much time in what i would call film if i equated to basketball in preparing for the games which were my commission meetings and that's kind of how I, I i literally that's how i got through it I, I looked at it as a basketball game i looked at it as a court i had five teammates it was five of us it was five of us on the basketball courts, five of us in the commission meetings. I looked at things that I needed to prepare for on the agenda. You know, that, would, that was my film that was studying, you know, what I had to study in order to be prepared for the game. And then, you know, the meetings ran smooth. Um, I was able to, you know, if you don't prepare for the games, you can't prepare for a victory. And so some, some battles I lost, but the, the, the most important thing I've learned is the spirit to just keep going, next play, next play. Next play, that one didn't work, next play. That don't work, you know, adjust. And um, that's not something that my colleagues were really used to. And I was blown away from her first meeting. I was like, what? what? I didn't even know a word she was speaking. <laughs> but obviously she knew, and that is how, you know, basketball plays a role in her life, everyday life. She uses it for things like that. Like even the commission, she said, hey, we're a team. We're our team. We come to win. Let's go. Let's get this championship and go. And they looking at her like, girl, they've been in basketball, but in her mind. <laughs> She's um, a hard worker and everything she does, she, she give it 100%. And it stands out so much that her leadership, it rolls off on the people that are uh, around her. She kind of impacts the, her circle to a point where those that are around her, they become leaders. And, um, that's one of the things that's so uh, astonishing about her. I don't know if she possesses uh, the perfect skills, but she has the perfect determination, the heart and the will that she has. And I think that outshines anything else. I don't even know if it's words to describe her as my sister, how proud I am of her. She's one of the most genuine people I know. And she doesn't sugarcoat anything. That is what I love about her. And no matter where she goes, she is Tamara James. She's not going to be anybody else but Tamara. And that is what I love about her. She doesn't pretend for different crowds, different people. What you see is what you get. In 2016, Tamara James, formerly of this league's Washington Mystics, was elected mayor of Dania Beach, Florida. Mohan, what is the WNBA? You got it. My favorite Black Panther. Hope that spoke to how I really live. I want to be able to live life to the fullest and give my all at whatever I do. Um, you never know what people are going through. And so if my smile or, or, or my interaction or my compassion
you know, my leadership can lead anyone else. Um, I want to be able to give all of that away while I still have time. A lot of people want athletes to shut up and play, but we have uh, a place in this world, whether it is in so social injustice, whether it is, you know, a lot of athletes that have gone back to be teachers and educators. You know, when you look around, a lot of the people that stop playing, they go back and they're, they're educators. They go back and they're into politics. They go back and, and, and they're giving back, whether it is at a basketball level or, or something else. And I think it's just unfortunate and it's up to us as athletes to be able to, you know, highlight that we're not just athletes till we die. You know, we, we're going to use everything that sports have taught us and we're going to thrive. Vote for Tamara Games, yeah! Now and he comes natural. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think he's good. <laughs>